Stitches show and welcome to the September Square in our 2022 Totally Tunisian Calendar Blanket. This month we are going to learn the Basket Weave Stitch. The Basket Weave Stitch is a very popular pattern whether you are knitting or crocheting. So of course we had to add it to this year's blanket. And to make this stitch we're basically going to use the same two Tunisian stitches that we used in last month's square. And I'm talking about the Tunisian Pearl Stitch and the Tunisian Knit Stitch. But we're going to swirl up how we use those two stitches and instead of a ribbed pattern, we're going to get a basket weave pattern. For this stitch, I want you to think in terms of sets of three. Three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit, for three rows. Then we change, three knit, three purl, three knit, three purl, for three rows. Got it? Sets of three. And that's how you weave a basket using yarn. <laughs> So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we'll stitch it up together. <laughs> for our Tunisian basket weave squares, we want 100 yards of a size 4 medium weight acrylic yarn, or the yarn you've been using all along for this blanket project. I'm using all sage for this month's square, so I'm going to show you how to work directly into the border without changing colors, but if you are changing colors, like I often do, then I'll also explain how to do that as well. Regularly it's 90 yards for the square, 10 yards for the border, 100 yards in total. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, your afghan or Tunisian crochet hook, a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9, or you can use a larger hook for tension purposes if required. And I like to switch back to a regular crochet hook in order to work the border, since that's just regular single crochet. This is also a 5.5 millimeter hook, but if you're using a larger afghan hook, be sure that you're using the same size regular hook if you're switching to that for the border. And once we've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. As usual, I highly recommend working a sampler of the project stitch before you jump into the entire square. This little sampler is 11 chains wide by 11 rows tall. That's because this month's stitch pattern works over any foundation chain row that is any multiple of three plus an extra two chains. And those two chains represent the stitches on either side of the square. So multiples of three and then an extra chain on either side. So multiple of three plus two. And I've just worked the same number of rows as I have the same number of chains just to get a nice little square going. And of course this gives me a really good idea of how the project stitch should look. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 38, that's 38, to begin. 38 chains fulfills our foundation formula requirement. So remember this stitch pattern can be worked over any foundation chain row that is a multiple of three plus two extra chains. So 38 is 36, the multiple of three plus two extra chains, that gives us 38, and, and now we can begin our square. The first row is a, an establishing row. We are going to pick up a loop on our hook for each of those chains all the way across. Of course, the first loop on our hook counts for the first chain. And by the time you've worked all the way across, you'll have 38 loops on your hook. At the end of your forward pass for row one, you'll have a little twisty worm all the way around your hook. You should have 38 loops on your hook. And the reverse pass is a standard reverse pass. We are going to yarn over, pull back through the first loop only, and then yarn over and pull back through two sets of loops all the way across. Yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two, and so on. You'll be left with a single loop on your hook. We're back to one loop left on our hook. We have now got an establishing row of 38 stitches all the way across. Each row will begin with a Tunisian simple stitch, much by default. This loop left on your hook already accounts for that first stitch, so every row begins in the second stitch. 
So this is a Tunisian simple stitch by default. You can count your rows by watching that little running stitch up the edge. And every row is going to end with a Tunisian simple stitch. We'll be using the two edge loops to create a simple stitch, and that'll just give us another nice, neat running stitch up the other side. But in between, we are going to be alternating between the Tunisian purl stitch and the Tunisian knit stitch. So let's begin. We are going to start with three Tunisian purl stitches. And the purl stitch is you bring your yarn to the front, you can bring it to the front of your work, or just bring it to the front of your hook, insert your hook through that first vertical bar, which is actually the second stitch in the row, bring your yarn over, it'll cross that vertical bar, then you yarn over and pick up a loop on your hook, and that will create a little bump or a purl sitting just beneath your hook. Let's do another two, bring the yarn forward, insert your hook, yarn crosses back, pick up a loop. I like to hold on to that little crossed bit of yarn just to keep it from riding away on me. There's my next little purl, and one more. So the thing to remember is that it's sets of three, sets of three, sets of three. That is the basket weave stitch. So there's the first three purl stitches created in our second row. This is the first row of the actual pattern. After you've done three purl stitches, you're going to switch to Tunisian knit stitch. The knit stitch is worked right through the fabric. You aim for that first vertical bar, but you punch your hook right through the fabric and pick up a loop. That's one, two, and three. So that knit stitch, if you're unsure, you just take a look at your yarn. You should see that little loop looking like it horseshoes around the loops on your hook. So there's our Tunisian simple stitch to start. We've got three purls and now three knit stitches established. Now we switch back to purl. So we bring our yarn forward and we make three purl stitches. All right, one, two, three. That's three purl stitches. You can see the little pearls sitting right underneath my hook. Then we switch back to the knit stitch. One, two, three three knit stitches all in a row. And this is what you're going to do all the way across. Three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit. And this is how we establish our basket weave pattern. You're looking for sets of three, so remember that first stitch here is always a simple stitch. We're going to ignore it for now. One, two, three purl, one, two, three knit, one, two, three purl, one, two, three knit, and so on. You're going to alternate three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit, all the way across. If you get lost, just stop. There's my three knit. I want to switch back to purl. And I'll catch up with you at the other side. Once you get all the way across, your first row is going to end with three knits, three knit stitches established, and then the last stitch is going to be a Tunisian simple stitch. So we're going to plunk our hook right through those two edge loops to pick up a loop. Be a little tight that first one. Pick up a loop in those two edge loops, and that will just create a nice running stitch up that side to sort of mirror the running stitch up this side. You should have 38 loops on your hook. They will break down three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit, and so on all the way across. And the reverse pass is standard. Yarn over, pull back through the first loop only. Yarn over, pull back through two loops. Yarn over, pull back through two loops. And so on all the way across. And you'll be back to one loop on your hook. And then we're gonna do this all over again.
We're back to one loop left on our hook. That loop by default works for this first stitch. It's a Tunisian simple stitch because it just is. And we are going to begin row two in the second stitch. You're going to repeat the row you just did twice more. So purl, 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 knit, 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 purl, 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 knit, knit, knit. Basically, if you had a purl stitch below, you're going to purl into it. If it's a knit stitch from the previous row, you're going to knit into it. So we begin with picking up three purl stitches, because that's the three purl stitches from the previous row. It's one, two, three. Then we switch to the knit stitch. So hook goes right through the fabric, right between those two vertical bars, the front and the back. One, two, three. And then we switch back to purl. So the yarn is on the front of the hook before we make our loop. Three purl. And then back to knit. Three knit stitches and so on all the way across. At the end of every row, regardless of whether or not you're ending with three knit or three purl, always make sure that the last stitch you make is a Tunisian simple stitch, and I'm working through those two end loops to create, that's picking up that loop there. Count them up, you should have 38 stitches still, and since we're still repeating the first row, that's three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit, and so on, and then a standard reverse pass. Yarn over, pull back through one loop only, Yarn over, pull back through two. Yarn over, pull back through two. All the way back. We're back to one loop on our hook and you can really see that pattern taking effect now. You've got three purls, three knit stitches, three purls, three knit stitches, and so on. This is the end of row three. We're technically two rows into the stitch pattern because that first row is just an establishing row. But you can count the loops here, one, two, three. You can see those three stitches running up the side, so you know you've just finished the third row of the square. But we've only done two rows of the pattern, and we need to do one more row exactly like the first. So three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit, and so on, ending with a Tunisian simple stitch at the end. Then a standard reverse pass, and we're going to change things up. That is the end of row four. It's the third row of the pattern. You can clearly see there is one, two, three little pearls in a row and one, two, three knits in a row and so on. So now we've got this established pearls and knits, pearls and knits all the way across. It looks a little bit checkery. And now we change the pattern. So for the next three rows, it's going to be three knit, three pearl, three knit, three pearl. And that is going to give us that little weaving uh, effect. So instead of purling in the purls from the previous row, we're going to knit, create three knit stitches. So three knit stitches in those first three stitches. One, two, three. And then we switch to purl. We create three purl stitches. So three knit, three purl, three knit, three purl, all the way across. Ending, of course, with a Tunisian simple stitch in the two edge loops. So that's always the same. Here we go. So three knit, three purl, three knit, three purl. And you're going to do this for three rows. At the end of the forward pass for row five, I've reversed the pattern. So now it's three knit, three purl, three knit, three purl, etc., ending with three purl and a Tunisian simple stitch. And of course, the reverse pass is the same. Yarn over, pull back through one loop only. Yarn over, pull back through two. Yarn over, pull back through two. So the reverse pass is always the same no matter what row you're on. 
you always begin in the second stitch of the row because the first stitch is already accounted for and the last stitch of the row is always a Tunisian simple stitch you want to pick up a loop in those two edge loops just to create a nice running stitch up the side everything in between is broken down into sets of three so this is going to be a row that begins with three knit three purl three knit three purl you're going to do that twice more three knit three purl three knit three purl and then you're going to switch back again that's three rows now that begin with three knit and then three purl three knit three purl and that follows the three rows that begin with three purls so three purl three knit three purl three knit you do that three times three each three rows begin with the purl and then three rows that begin with the knit and you alternate every three rows and that gives us that cute little woven basket effect so you can count your rows at the side one two three four five six seven I've done seven rows of the pattern in total so seven rows of the square the square is going to be 32 rows tall like our other squares that first row is just the establishing row so that means that I've done actually six rows of the pattern so three rows that begin with purl three rows that begin with knit and now I'm going to switch back to purl three purl three knit three purl three knit I'll do three rows exactly like that and then I will switch again and that's all you've got to do all the way up I will see you at the end of row 31 and then we're just going to work one finishing row just to neaten off our square and we'll head on to the border. I have completed 31 rows in my square so that's the foundation row and then 30 rows of the little repeating pattern three rows that begin with three purl, three rows that begin with three knit, and of course you're alternating three purl, three knit, three purl, three knit, or three knit, three purl, three knit, three purl, all the way across. Every row ends with a Tunisian simple stitch and by default begins with one, so we have this nice running stitch that runs up the edge both sides. It's an easy way to count your rows, that's how I know I've done 31. And now we've got one more row to do, and so instead of just starting to repeat the pattern all over again, we're going to do a row of Tunisian simple stitch. And of course simple stitch is just like the other rows, we're going to start in the second stitch. You just insert your hook into that first row or that first bar and pick up a loop. Insert your hook in the bar, pick up a loop, and so on all the way across. You'll still have 38 loops on your hook by the time you get to the end of the row. And then it's a standard reverse pass all the way back. And this will basically just finish off our square much the same way that it started. I've completed row 32, that's a row of Tunisian simple stitch, so the square ends much the same way it began. We're not continuing with our little basket weave pattern instead, it's just a simple row of Tunisian simple stitch. And that still gives us 38 stitches across, and now it's time to turn to our border. I am not changing colors for my border, so I am just going to take out my Tunisian hook and I'm going to put in my regular crochet hook and I'm going to chain one. For those of you who are changing colors, you're gonna not chain one, you're going to snip your yarn, fasten off, and you're going to join your border color with a single crochet right around that first vertical bar. That's the vertical bar of the first stitch. For the rest of us who are not changing colors, I've chained one and I'm going to single crochet into that first vertical bar of the first stitch so whether you've changed colors or not we all begin with a single crochet in that first vertical bar and now we're going to single crochet in each vertical bar of each stitch all the way across and that will be 38 regular single crochets across the top of our square and that is the first side for our border Stitch number 38 is the edge, the edge vertical bar. I'm only using one of them at the very end, so it's number 38, the last stitch. 
Then we chain one to turn the corner and remember to single crochet into the same vertical bar. And that becomes the first single crochet running down now the edge of your square. And it's really easy to sort of see where you want to work your stitches. You're looking for that nice little running stitch along the edge. You want to grab a single vertical bar, a single bar along the edge. So not both now, we're just going to grab the front one. You're going to single crochet in each one of those bars down the row edge. You'll have 33, because remember there are 32 rows of the square and there is one foundation chain row at the bottom. And that gives you 33 single crochet up and down both sides. Single crochet number 33 is worked into what was the first chain we made. You might still have your little short tail dangling there. Chain one to turn the corner and remember to single crochet into the same foundation chain. That becomes the first stitch across the bottom. And then you're just going to single crochet in each foundation chain all the way across. You'll have 38 single crochet across the bottom too. Single crochet number 38 is in the last chain across the bottom. Chain one to turn the corner and single crochet into the same place. That becomes stitch number one up the other side and you will have 33 in total running up your second side. And of course, we're just grabbing the front vertical bars now as we go up the side. So one bar on the edge, that's the front vertical bar and that will help match the other side. And I'll see you up at the top. Single crochet number 33 is worked into the same vertical bar that your first single crochet was put in. Chain one to turn the last corner and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet of the entire border. And that is that. You can fasten off. Take a moment to weave in your tails and then I will definitely be giving this a light blocking so that I can square it up because it's a little wider than it is tall and of course I want to make it a nice square and I can already see that that's going to block into a nice square for me. And I've just finished blocking my square. It lays flat. It's a nice flat straight edged square piece and it's all ready to add to the pile with the other eight squares so far in this year's calendar blanket. The basket weave stitch. I love it. I love it whether I'm knitting or crocheting and of course the Tunisian version is a nice little halfway meeting point. <laughs> it's a cool stitch. I find it doesn't move maybe as quickly as the rib stitch did but I do like being able to alternate between the purl stitch and the knit stitch. It's kind of like getting a little break every three stitches, you know, it keeps your brain active. Anyway, let me know down below if you liked the rib stitch use of the knit and purl stitches or the basket weave stitch use of the knit and purl stitches. Which one did you like better? And we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.